Hey guys, we're ready to move on with our next step, actually our final step in our monochromatic animals project. Um, we started this process um, first by uh, being introduced to Line and some of the artists who um, were just amazing in their use of Line. And next we moved on to creating value scales, um, using line tech, uh, shading techniques um, that use line rather than just pencil pressure because these are done with pen so you kind of have to use line and we tried some different techniques and you guys who turned that in did really well with it um, then we moved on to drawing eight of the 16 animals that you had the option to choose from um, for your final drawing you still have that option to choose from them uh, but we drew just the outlines, added some details, and then we took two of those animals and we did some uh, shading with pen. We practiced um, so that we would kind of get a feel for it. Um, I haven't seen a lot of those from you guys yet, so I don't know how you did with it, um, but I'm sure that you did the best you could, and um, I'll be looking at those soon. So. Um, now our, our next step and our last step is to choose one of the animals from our PowerPoint. You do not have to choose one of the eight ones you've already drawn. Um, you don't have to choose one of the two that you already shaded. Um, sometimes you just want something new and I understand that and I'm perfectly okay with that. So uh, I'm going to flip my page over to a new page here. I'm going to actually set it like this because I already know which one I want to do. But let me flip over to showing you the, um, the PowerPoint. Now these are the animals that we can choose from. Let's go back to the top here. Um, there's four animals that you can choose to do that are green. Now the reason that they're labeled down here is because that's the color pen I want you to use if you choose this animal. Um, remember your final version has to be completely in pen. Um, there, it's just one color. You can draw it first in pencil, so draw lightly because at the end you're going to erase those pencil lines and marks. Um, you can do your shading in pencil if you want and then erase it. But if you shade in pencil in the dark places, um, in the deep shadows, like here you see, you know, under his neck and where his tympanic membrane is and around his eye, you're going to have a really hard time erasing that. So I would encourage you, yes, draw all the outlines in pencil and maybe some of the details, but leave the final shading for doing it in pen. So we've got four animals we can use in green, so if you... If You've got a green pen and you want to do a green animal then these are your four choices um, next we have blue animals if you've got a blue pen which most of us have blue pens laying around uh, that's a pretty common color you can do one of these four animals and if you've got a red pen uh, again probably pretty common for most of us to have a red pen if not they're easy to get a hold of and you can do one of these four animals. And then finally, uh, black is our last choice. Uh, I, was, I, don't, I don't want to say color choice because technically black's not a color, it's a shade. Um, so you've got these four to choose from. I am going to do this uh, bear who looks like he's done something awful and is ashamed of himself. Uh, so. Um, the reason I'm choosing this bear is because um, in your final version, you don't have to do a lot of background. If your animal works out to where you know it looks good without background, like say for instance, this this panda right, this red panda, if you did, he runs off the page, so that really helps um, that you don't just don't really need a background that much. So if you lay him out on your page where he runs off the bottom of your page just like this is, it's going to look fine without anything in the background. Um, on the other hand, if you did this squirrel, you don't want to make your squirrel just floating in the air. You want to make sure that he's sitting on something. So you could do 
you know, just the top or even this whole little rock. Uh, I don't know if it's a rock or maybe it might be some type of wood, but it's got some kind of moss ground on it and whatnot. So you want to have him sitting on something. So the bear's kind of the same way. He's sitting on this tree branch. So I'm going to draw part, I'm going to draw the outlines of the tree branch. I'm not going to worry too much about all the details, but I thought it would be good to show you that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of my face. All right, guys, I had a little bit of uh, technical difficulty there well, at the end of that video, but thankfully it, it only cut off a little bit. And so I just jumped into uh, sketching this out very quickly. As you can see, I'm doing the outlines, which we've had some practice doing. Uh, you can see me adding that branch there. It's just the outside of it. And I'm just going to get like the main details. Now, it's up to you how much detail you want to put into your animal. Uh, I would say only put in as much detail as you think you need. Um, if you start to add a uh, pen and you find, oh man, I really need some more details, you can always go back and add more details. But once you've drawn something, you can't take it away easily, especially if you have a heavy hand with a pencil. Now, if you're light-handed and you can erase, then don't worry about it. You know, add as much detail as you want, but um, just be careful of it. So I'm using, for this, the kind of shading I'm using is just I'm um, emulating fur. So I'm just doing lots of short lines, and I'm trying to watch and carefully look at how long the lines are for each part of his body. So like around his face there where I'm working now, um, the lines are, the fur is pretty short, so I'm using short lines. And you'll see when I get towards his arm and on his back, the lines are longer because his fur is longer. So, um, Sorry, somebody was trying to come in. So um, just keep, uh, just be careful of the way you're using your lines. Um, the, one of the easiest ways to create value is to just emulate, emulate the texture that is on the animal you've chosen. So say if you've chosen the chameleon, the chameleon has lots of little scales, the um, Snake as well has lots of scales, so you want, might want to draw those scales to help give you value there. So that's just all I'm doing here is using the fur. Um, you'll see that I kind of tend to do the dark areas first and then go back and add the lighter areas around it. That's not a prescription, like you don't have to do it that way. That's just what is what makes sense to me as an artist. Now you might be the opposite. You might say, I, I gotta do the lighter areas first and then work darker. Um, whatever works for you. There's one of the great things that I love about art is there's lots of different ways to get a good result. And so that's for you as an artist, you have to find those ways. And most of you at your age, don't know those ways yet and so you're part of what you're doing is exploring so let me encourage you to explore uh, yes this is a finished product you're trying to get your absolute best um, but still it's okay to for it not to be perfect at the end um, and you may decide you get halfway through it and you may decide I need to start over because I want it to be better or you find a way that is better as you're working on it and it makes you want to start over, go ahead and start over. Um, art is all about, you know, finding the right ways and trial and error. And so um, I'm, when I was working on these legs right there, I figured something out about how to get the black uh, to look good going back into the fur. So, uh, you know, I'm still learning. I always will be learning as an artist. Uh, so enjoy this process, guys. If you have questions, please contact me. It 
is definitely challenging. Um, if you get to a certain point and you're just not so sure where to go, send me a picture. You can send it via email and just ask me the questions you need to ask me. I am here to help you guys take advantage of that. Um, I'm just about finished and before I sign off uh, and get all done here, I want to tell you when you're finished, the very last step you should take is to let your ink dry, uh, which may take, let it dry for an hour, and then go back with a big eraser and erase your pencil lines, because you don't want to see those in the end. You actually won't see me erase my pencil lines, but that's because um, their mine are so light, you can't even see them anymore on the video. I do go back and erase them after I finish the video, so um, sign your name at the end and you'll be done. Enjoy, guys.